right here with Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. Uh, obviously, Eddie, tough week. Um, greatest of all time, passed away a few days ago. You had a, a personal relationship with him. Uh, so, so what does this passing mean to you? First and foremost, it, it, it hurts. It really hurts because here's a, a gentleman that took me by the hand and uh, showed me how to win a world championship. Coach, man, Show me how to be a world champion and how to carry myself as a world champion with grace, humility, and dignity. Now you, you were hanging around him when he was at his, uh, his height, you know, and when he was, you know, I mean, he still is, obviously, but one of the most famous people in the world. What was that like for you? Specifically saying, hey, here's this guy, Muhammad Ali, Muhammad freaking Ali, you know, this great man, he's, he's hanging out with me. What, what was that like for you personally? It was great because we did a lot of things together. I mean, after we would eat dinner, we go horseback riding. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just being around him, he throws that aura of invincibility towards you. So when you step into the ring, you know, you just say, oh man, look here, I've been hanging around Ali and, and, and what was on him rubbed off on me and I'm gonna be the world champion. You mentioned horseback riding. I heard someone on the radio mention him uh, skiing. Said he wasn't very good at it, but but uh, <laughs> was was that something he did a lot? of The stuff that you might not you know expect him to do. Well, listen, Ali was an adventurer. <laughs> you know, he did just about anything he wanted to do. But one thing, like I said, that we did do after we would have a dinner, we would go horseback riding at night. You know, I mean, we had a great time. We ran them horses to death. We had a great time. You, you, you shared some great stories with us over the years. Um, you know, first for you personally, you kind of touched on what kind of impact did he have directly on you, and then for the world overall. First and foremost, he was a visionary. He was a man that wasn't afraid to take chances, and whatever he believed in, you know, he showed you what he believed in. He showed you why he's doing it. I mean. When he refused to go uh, step forward to receive his draft card, and when they took his title, he didn't care because at the end of the day, he knew it was right. We had no business being in Vietnam. For what? Why are we going to Vietnam for? They uh, never did anything to us. And ex um, especially, you know, being a, a black person that time, you know, it's easy to see you know, why he'd be reluctant to go and fight, you know, for the United States, a country where he has to drink a separate, black, uh, you know, separate water fountain, you know, or, or something like that. Yeah, and, and you know what? He, he, like I said, showed us how to be proud of our color and our heritage. He took that first step, you know. He, whatever he said, he backed it up with his actions. You know, he, uh, he said, what about he... The, the Viet Cong never called him the N-word, you know what I'm saying? And he can't get justice in his own country, you know what I'm saying? So why should I go and fight the people that never did anything to me? How did he turn that around? You know, first of all, you know, a black man at that time, a lot, a lot of hate anyway just for being black. Then you avoid the dry out, so that pisses even more people off. So he goes from being very hated to, you know, the time of his death, one of the you know, two really most beloved people in my lifetime, for sure. So how did he turn that around? Well, basically, just by showing the people what he said was true. Again, we had no, no quarrel with the Viet Cong. They never did anything to us. Why should we go over there? You had thousands of our troops killed. Why would we over there for what? And then when, they, when some of them came back, it was hard for them to get medical attention, jobs, and yet they put their lives on the line to come back to nothing. Uh, speak quickly about the, the Muslim part. Of course, you're formerly Eddie Gregory, now Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. Uh, tell us about that transition and the role he played in it. Well, you know, like I said, by being around Ali, he was a devout Muslim. My brothers and sisters were devout Muslim. It was just a matter of time before I took my Shahada and became a devout Muslim. And that's what I did. And it just, when I took my Shahada and, be, and became a Muslim, it was uh, different. I felt 
an inner peace within myself. What about the Muhammad, the Muhammad part came from him too? Correct? Yeah, Muhammad is the one that gave me the name. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. Mustafa means praiseworthy. Muhammad, no, Mustafa means chosen. Muhammad means praiseworthy. Worthy of praise. What, do you have a personal, you know, a personal favorite moment, some, you know, little thing that you know, when I know about that you remember? Uh, you know, we, we did a lot of good things together. I love the, the one story you guys ride in the cab, you know, when, when oh, you, that was a great one. We were going to uh, say Salat. You know, we're going to prayers on a Friday afternoon. We're going to prayers and we're stuck in traffic. And the masjid was maybe about two blocks down the road. And again, it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon, Friday, and it's crowded in the street. He jumps out of the cab and starts running to say the prayer. Evidently, that made us real late. <laughs> you know what I'm Because everybody wanted autographs. Yeah, and he signed every one of them. Yeah. What about a professional memory of his? You know, so maybe he didn't earn stand up. The, the, we got to realize one thing. Ali was just about as quick as anybody in the ring. That's why he got away with a lot of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? By pulling his head back, hands down. He got away with it because of his speed. He had blinding speed, quick hands, quick feet, great reflexes. And he, when, he, when you do a punch at him and you miss, he would counter and make you pay for that. What about like for, for kids, you know, you know, maybe just getting their teens now, early 20s, whatever, I didn't grow up with him, you know, either as a performer or as, as a, you know, world you know, ambassador. You know, what, what did they get to miss? I mean, they get to hear his stories, but what, was, what are they going to miss that they didn't get to see out of this guy? They are going to miss an individual that when you say the greatest in the dictionary, you see a picture of Muhammad Ali smiling. You know what I'm saying? Because he was truly the greatest. He was one of the greatest men that I ever had the pleasure to sit down and have dinner, lunch, and breakfast with. Don't question the day of a better man than fighter. He was a better man because what he did in the ring, it doesn't compare to the type of man he was outside of the ring. Like I said, I know he meant a lot to you. You're going to the funeral, head up tomorrow to Kentucky. Just, just final thoughts of, you know, overall the guy, what he meant to you, what he meant to the world. He meant everything to me. He meant everything, everything. My well-being, he molded me into the person that I am today. You know, former world champion with dignity and humility. You know what I'm saying? He, he had, you know, health problems obviously the last year of his life. I mean, is it? It's hard to say, but it's almost like are you relieved in some sort of way that the pain can stop? Or, or you know, a guy like Ali, you knew the type of condition he was in, but you never wanted to get that call to say that the end is here. I got that call three hours before Ali passed away. A friend of mine called me. He said, I'm just calling you to let you know that the bopper, this is what we call him, the bopper. Said the bopper's not gonna make it. He got a few hours to live. Sure enough, I got a call a little later on in that day that said he passed away. Can you share what, you know, your first reaction, your thoughts to that? I mean, do you go back and re recall your friendship and your relationship with him or? You know, goes everything goes through your mind. You know, if I had to shed a little tear for him, I took a walk by myself. I didn't come to the gym. I wanted to just be by myself and just reminisce the good times we had together. You know, you could, I could never forget all those great times that we had together, all the great things that he's done for me that made me the person who I am today. All right, Eddie, I appreciate the, uh, the comments and sorry for your loss and the whole world actually lost a, a great, great guy. Without a doubt. Thank you. Right. Thank you.